scientists monitoring the sun notice a huge violet explosion called a coronal mass ejection, or CME. A coronal mass ejection is essentially a piece of the sun. It's a large blob that gets hurled out of sunspots and off into space. Ripping through space at over one million miles an hour, the solar flare slams into the magnetic field that surrounds the Earth, triggering a truly global effect. As far south as the equator, the skies light up in auroras brighter than any in living memory. It'll be an otherworldly experience, almost psychedelic, all these green and red colors, sometimes purple and blue. Anything that runs on power will be immediately affected. With communications down, most people don't yet realize the event is global. It seems like just a typical local blackout. But for scientists, and national security experts, it's a worst case scenario. Compared with even a nuclear war, that'd be terrible and a lot of people would die, but losing the electric grid would kill a lot more people. Once the lights go off, they're not gonna come back on. I doubt if they would be back in 10 or 15 years. The lack of electricity also siphons off another key element to modern civilization. Gasoline. Every day, the world consumes 94 million barrels of oil, most of which is pumped through pipelines using electricity. Without electric power, even those pipelines that didn't explode in the initial surge would shut down. And the gas that's already at your local station is also out of reach. The pump at the gasoline station was electric, so you can't even fill up your five-gallon can that you've got in the garage. You're going to have people lined up a mile long in panic trying to get gas or also get petrol for their electrical generating systems. The modern food system is also totally dependent on electricity for growing, harvesting, transporting, and refrigerating. All of that has instantly collapsed. In our regional food warehouses, we only have enough food to feed the population for 30 days. After 30 days, there is no food. And in fact, after 72 hours, the emergency generators that keep the food cool run out of gas, and its food starts to spoil. The entire global financial system runs on electricity. The bank doesn't have a pile of money sitting in a vault for you back there that you can then access. It's a bunch of bits, dots and dashes that are stored in electronic computer systems that will be inaccessible. So suddenly your lifetime savings could be wiped out. As the world tries to cope with the blackout, not everyone is in a state of chaos. In some houses, like this one 40 miles outside of Denver, the lights are still on. This family is part of the worldwide community known as preppers. They get their power from solar panels. You will have a source of electricity, even if it's minor. You'll still have enough electricity to be able to run little things that would allow you to survive and actually be a hub for your neighborhood, for people who aren't as fortunate as you. Preppers are ordinary citizens, decent folks who are trying to think ahead think about, what do I do with the community? And the really smart ones have networked up into teams. Doctors, nurses, mechanics, people do things with their hands. As people across the globe try to cope and survive, they are also trying to make sense of this disaster. Most have never heard of a solar storm, but this isn't the first time it's happened. The last huge coronal mass ejection to strike Earth hit just before the dawn of the electric age. In September of 1859, the mother of all solar flares hit the planet Earth. It's called the Carrington event. Astronomer Richard Carrington was analyzing the sun and saw this gigantic solar flare that took place on the sun. 17 hours later, 
the skies exploded in auroras. And the world's first primitive electrical system, the telegraph, crashed and burned. Telegraph operators record enormous anomalies, fires, sparks taking place, and telegraph wires being electrified as if by magic. It took months to repair the telegraph system, but the impact on civilization was relatively minor because in those days, the telegraph was the only electrical system on Earth. In 1989, a much smaller solar storm blacked out the Canadian province of Quebec, and we had a dangerously close call in 2012. In 2012, there was an enormous coronal mass ejection from the sun. Fortunately for us, the bundle of particles crossed Earth's orbit about two weeks after Earth was at that location. In fact, it took two years for NASA to finally issue a press release saying, oh, by the way, two years ago, we almost had a catastrophic failure of civilization as we know it. The level of worldwide devastation caused by the solar storm is exactly what scientists predicted when the U.S. Congress held hearings on the subject in the early 2000s. Congressional studies here in the U.S. state that about 90% of the population would be dead. That's 300 million people. On a global level, out of the population currently of about seven to seven and a half billion, that means there'd be less than a billion people still alive. The congressional hearings also stated solar storms are just part of the threat to our electrical grid. A similar phenomenon of massive blackouts could be caused by the detonation of a nuclear bomb in space. The energy released would cause an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. They were first discovered in 1962 when both the Americans and the Russians detonated in orbit nuclear weapons. And both the Russians and the Americans were surprised at how long these waves reached and knocked out the transformers. National security experts warned for years that if terrorists exploded nukes in space and triggered an EMP, modern society could be devastated. So various government plans were hatched to harden and protect the electrical grid, which would safeguard it from both electromagnetic pulses and solar storms. Hardening the grid is a remarkably simple, inexpensive process for as little as 10 to $15 billion. But little was done. Most electrical systems are run by private companies, not governments. Try to tell any utility executive that you meet anywhere that that's what utilities ought to be spending their money on and you will not get a pleased response. Everybody's saying, well, no, that's not my job, it's yours. No, wait, it's yours. Others were skeptical that terrorists had the capability to detonate nukes in space. And as for a giant solar storm, there hadn't been one in the 120 years since mankind became dependent on electricity. So many government officials had a hard time believing scientists' warnings. What response did we get? We got the giggle factor. Politicians simply giggled at us and said, what? This is something from Hollywood. You guys don't need any money. Nobody has ever really lived through anything of this nature, so it's very difficult for people to even fathom its existence. The chance of another event which could paralyze civilization is about 1% per year. That means in one decade, there's perhaps a 10% chance that all our electronics will be wiped out. We'll be thrown back 100 years into the past. Here are a few common sense steps. First, reinforce the grid 
create redundant systems, backup systems, train emergency crews so that they know how to get the power stations up to speed again. We know how to prepare for it. We know what to do. The question is money, planning, changing our orientation, because it's not a question of if, it's a question of when the sun blows its top again.